We all know why the angry birds are so furiously angry. It's simple, they don't have any wings. There are many of us enthusiasts with a 100% focus on driving. Approaching a vehicle for us is built upon expectations. When we look at the car, we want to get connected. We carefully examine the car and build up what kind of experience that we will have together. And sometimes you could remove an item to create more passion, more feeling, knowing that you could squeeze under the radar, not be seen, but having a beautiful experience and the art of driving a sports car. I feel lucky owning a GT3, especially with the manual gearbox. Even though you drive in a very calm manner, in some very slow speed, you have an attraction to the manual, going from fourth to third, from third to the second. And it's um, always something special of changing the gear yourself. And the um, communication or the information that you receive from this car, from the tires, from the road, are so extended. So when you start to actually push the car and drive the car, that's when the magic starts to happen even more. I have said several times that the um, speed shifting is spectacular and um, that is a dimension the GT3 RS could, RS could not deliver. I, in the middle of the street of a crossroad, yeah, you, you're the things I'd like to dream, but we, we were everything that we dreamed of, but was only give no take If I was Doc Brown with the ability to go back in time, watching myself a year ago when I was argued to get the poss possibility to specify my GT3 myself. I was very convinced that the right GT3 for me was the Touring. A year later when I've been driving, driving my club sport, I'm not that convinced anymore. And I'm going to tell you why. The club sport delivers a package of security. With the rear wing, I have the ability to get more downforce. The roll cage and the race harnesses protect me more when I go on the racetrack. And I intend to go on track days and B roads and have the total joy of, of driving experience. And as a family father, me personally, I prioritize the safety. But if I was only driving on B roads, I wouldn't blink a second. The Touring is the car for me. Oh, power shifting uh, GT3 could never be better experience. Um, I have told you in my GT3 track day experience day how intense it is in, um, in, um, on a track. 
and um, in the track you normally speed shift at very high rev. But one thing that you should not forget is that you can speed shift your GT3 in any revs, getting the perhaps not so intense experience, but a great experience of having the manual gearbox and doing all the engaging things that you do with it. Ooh. I have been privileged jumping back and forth between the GT3 RS and the GT3. And um, I prefer the manual GT3 on the B road. That's um, that's for sure. That's not. It's not a question. It's just a statement, a proper statement that are valid. It is so much more fun. Yes, you are so much faster in the RS. I will not get into that argument whatsoever. But the let me try to explain. When, when you drive the GT3 RS, it is a. It is. A, it's like an extremely sharp knife. You, you, you just twist it around the corners without any distractions of whatsoever. But in the GT3, especially with the manual gearbox, you are in a situation where, where the car is not 100% stable at all times, depending on your manual gear shift skills. And that's, that's the excitement. And having control of that uh, creates something beyond. I was surprised when I felt that the GT3 Touring was softer than my own GT3 Club Sport. I dig down into all the material I have about the GT3, trying to find out what the difference was. I actually asked Porsche Center Stockholm to dig down into the item numbers to see if I could spot any differences in the chassis. Everything pointed in one direction. The Touring and the GT3 Club Sports has the exact same chassis. But what was it? Because it is a distinctive difference between my own car and this one. Everything cooked down to the seats. The GT3 has become so refined that a seat change actually affects the experience of driving a GT3. No, the only thing that differs the Club Sport versus the Touring is the rear end. And the look and feel of the interior is in my opinion in the right direction. But the manual gearbox could not be deleted in the Touring. The Touring package transformed the GT3 from a more sporty, aggressive young man into a elegant but sexy lady wearing a skirt. She shows her rounded lines and the beautiful skirt comes around it, creating a delicate, more subtle and more clearer 9-11 lines. And perhaps this is what we argue about. The looks, the beauty, with or without a rear wing. Obviously, the taste is within the beholder, but um, if you are a pure 911, driver's man, driver's woman, these lines without a distraction of the rear wing attracts more. So one thing that distinguishes the touring package compared to the, let's say, wing equipped car is the rear air intake to the engine. The air obviously gets down in the top here, but here it's totally different. And uh, I'm not sure how that affects the engine, probably nothing. But I haven't been able to compare the noise 100%, but it is a different tone in the touring engine. Last weekend's 
I have jumped back and forth between GT3 and GT3 RS. And I come up with a few conclusions. The GT3 should be equipped with a manual gearbox. And um, if you are equipping your G3 with a PDK, then the best choice would have been the RS. The RS are tuned to a such a level it is extremely close to the PlayStation games. It, it reacts on each movement that you do, being able to position the car at the best, best, best position without having to interfere with the gear change. The manual gearbox is for the driver's man, driver's woman that prioritize the experience and the joy of driving a sports car rather than the lap times. And from that perspective, I'm super happy that my GT3 is equipped with a manual gearbox. You could argue if you should go with a touring pack or a club sport, but that is a measure of safety.